Now, I don't need to tell you what a year 2020 has been. And this, as if it couldn't get any worse, yesterday, 4 p.m., the PM's announcement, and suddenly, all of London, the South East, now in Tier 4, and 18 million households are going to be celebrating Christmas alone. What a year. It is brutal. It has been brutal. It still is. There's still 11 days to go. What more is in store? We've had Tier 3, Tier 4. Is it going to be a Tier 5? How bad can it get? Uh, I'm told that... Um, Christmas tree sellers have been having a bumper year this year. Did you hear this? Um, more trees being sold than ever before. Uh, more trees being put up earlier than ever before. I think we're just wanting something to celebrate, something to look forward to, bring in some early festive cheer. But now even that's being taken from us. I can't even share it with anyone on Christmas Day. How are you feeling right now? I was chatting to quite a few of the church family members, actually, since the announcement yesterday. Anger, frustration, gloomy, fed up, disheartened, a whole range of negative emotions. I don't know if that's you. I have some good news to share with you now. I think we all need that, right? Some good news. Here it is, not from me, from this passage, the prophet Isaiah. He is writing 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, telling us why the person of Jesus is such good news for you and me today. He is a leader like no other who brings in a future like no other. Let's look at each of those in turn. First, a leader like no other. You can follow along on the bulletin if you'd like. In verse 2 of this famous Bible passage, we are told that the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. This is the Spirit who anoints God's kings, God's leaders throughout the Old Testament the Spirit of God himself. But unlike all other leaders in the Old Testament, this leader, this shoot from the stump of Jesse, he is going to have a sevenfold anointing of the Spirit. Not just the Spirit of the Lord resting upon him, but the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Sevenfold. Seven. The number seven in the Bible. The number of perfection. Wholeness. Completeness. What is Isaiah telling us about this person? Here is a leader like no other. God's perfect king. A perfect leader. One that you and I can absolutely trust with the entirety of our lives. In preparation for this talk, I googled failed leadership 2020. <laughs> Do you know how many results came up? 235 million. <laughs> President Trump has failed the test of modern leadership. That was number one, Fortune magazine. Global leadership missing in action. That was The Economist. Boris Johnson is failing the nation, multiple sources. <laughs> now, let me be quick to say I'm not making any political point here, um, nor am I wanting to have a pop at anyone. I mean, I'm a church leader. I, I can tell you it's been incredibly difficult these past nine months trying to lead people through everything that we have been facing. But it is to say to quote a famous phrase, the best of men are just men at best. That so often in life, those in positions of authority over positions of leadership, they do make mistakes. They do go missing in action. They do fail the test of modern leadership. They fail us. They fail the nation. And in those times especially the times we're facing right now, times of crisis, where do you turn? Who can you and I trust in? I was talking to a neighbor earlier this year, 
who quite openly said to me, Mark, look, I don't know who to trust right now. I don't really trust the politicians. They seem to be making it up as they go along. I don't know which of the scientists to trust because there seems to be conflicting sort of evidence and theories coming out about COVID. And I certainly don't trust myself because I'm quite aware of the mess I often make in my life. So who do I trust? Who do I turn to? Let me read from verse 3. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. Verse 5. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash round his waist. Righteousness, doing right, knowing what's right, faithfulness, an absolute commitment to that right. Can you imagine a leader whose words you can act that come out of that, that you can trust every single one of them? That every word that comes out is right and true and good, and there's no white lies, and there's no fake news, and there's no spin. Can you imagine a leader who always knows the right thing to do, whatever the situation? the nation is facing, knows perfectly what to do, and doesn't just know it, does it, not for his own vain glory and personal ego, but purely because it's the right thing to do, and he does it for the good of others. Can you imagine a leader like that? Maybe you can't. No, I can't imagine a leader like that. That is who Jesus Christ is. A leader like no other. Born of the Virgin Mary, so yes, fully human, but also conceived by the Spirit of the Lord. Fully divine. Perfect in every way. Just think of Jesus' life as he grows up with the spirit of wisdom and understanding upon him. Always knowing what to say to people. Just the right thing. Just what people need to hear. Every word that came out of Jesus' mouth, people were astounded. We have never heard anything like this. The fact that our own justice system today is still founded upon the teaching of Jesus Christ. The spirit of counsel and of might, the sheer power of Jesus Christ. He walked on water, he calmed the storm, he healed the sick, he fed thousands of people with just such ease. The power he had, and he never abused his power. But ultimately, at the end of his life, laid down all his power as he chose to die for you and me and our salvation. What a leader. And not just that, three days later, he rose from the dead, having conquered death. The spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Here is someone who lived the entirety of his life in perfect obedience to his Father in heaven. The one person to live a perfect life, the perfect life you and I fail to live, to die the death that we deserve so we could be forgiven by God and have that same spirit of the Lord at work now in our hearts to know and fear and love the Lord today. Is it no wonder then that no other leader in the history of humanity has had so many books written about him than Jesus Christ? So many songs sung about him. So many lives influenced by him. Jesus Christ is the central figure of the most read book in the world. He is the head of the most populous religion in the world. Jesus Christ literally split time in two. B.C. A.D., before Christ, Anno Domini, the year of the Lord. Here is someone you can turn to right now. Whatever you are facing, whatever we are going through, here is someone you absolutely can trust with your life. He is a leader like 
no other. But that's not all. I told you I had some good news for you. That's just half the passage. There's more here. The future that one day will Jesus will bring in. This is verses 6 to 9. A future like no other. Let me read from verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. Now you don't need to be a gamekeeper at London Zoo to know this is not the normal run of things. As a family, we went to Woburn Safari Park this week before the restrictions kicked in, I should add. And you will not be surprised to know that they had the lions and the tigers in a separate enclosure because lions and tigers don't normally live and lie down with goats or lambs or little children. They eat them. As I was trying to explain to one of my four children who wanted to go stroke the tiger, Stay in the car. Keep that window up. This is not normal what we read here. But listen, the future that Jesus will one day bring in is going to be like this. The cow feeding with the bear. Their young lying down together. The lion eating straw like the ox. An infant will play near the cobra's den. The young child will put his hand in the viper's nest. And there'll be no harm and no destruction. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Do you see the picture Isaiah is given here of the future Jesus will one day bring in? Perfect peace. Perfect harmony. The whole world over. This is a picture of Eden. This is a picture of what life was like before humanity turned its back on God to go it alone. And so this is a picture of restoration, of this world renewed. Jesus is not going to take us off to some clouds in heaven, playing harp music all day long. It is going to be this world renewed, this world made right, life as it was always intended to be by God. This is the future Jesus will one day bring in. don't know if you've seen any of the letters children are sending to Santa this year. For the first time ever, USPS has posted them all on the Operation Santa website. And let me read a couple of them to you. Dear Santa, this year has been rough this year because of Krona, but I was hoping to get some Lego sets because my mum said she can't get me anything for Christmas because she's not getting paid as much, so she can't afford anything. And I'd appreciate it if my mum could get something too, because she takes care of us and gives me food and works very hard, and so I just wanted something for her like a gift card. Always love, from Alany, age nine. Dear Santa, I don't want anything for Christmas, but I'd like to ask if you can do me a favour. Could you please find a cure for COVID-19 and give it to us to save the world? Thank you. Love, Jonah. Now, I have to admit, I choked up a little bit when I first read these two letters. And perhaps it's just me. And perhaps it's because I've got four young children myself. Or perhaps it's because deep down, these letters from these children tap into a longing we are all feeling right now. For there to be someone who can save this world. To bring some light into the darkness we're all facing right now. Some joy amidst the suffering. Be it a cure for COVID-19. Or perhaps even more fundamentally, a cure for all that is wrong with this world. We long for it, don't we? We know Santa can't provide it for us. Adults know that to be true. But do you know that Jesus can bring this sort of future in. We're about to sing Hark the Herald. Peace on earth, mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. All that is wrong between humanity and God, all our sin, all our failed leadership of ourselves and others, all the times we have gone it alone without God, all the times we haven't lived rightly in his world, Jesus Christ has paid for it all. 
That is why he died. He died for you. So God and sinners can be reconciled. And three days later, risen from the dead, eternal light through the ultimate darkness and eternal joy from ultimate suffering. Of course Jesus Christ can bring this sort of future in. He made the world, he can renew the world, he restored people's hands just like that. He can restore this whole world in just an instant. It is so easy for him. And the only reason he has not done it yet is because he does not want any of you to miss out. But for everyone to have a chance and opportunity to hear the good news of Christmas and what Jesus is about. And so make a decision for him. And to do so before it's too late. Now, of course, some of you will be hearing this for the first time. Perhaps you never knew this is what Christmas was about and what the birth of Jesus was all about. I didn't for the first 22 years of my life, so perhaps you want to look into it some more. And that's what we're all about here at Inspire St. James. We'd love to help you with that. You don't have to be a Christian to come here. You just need to want to find out more about Jesus Christ. But for any people here or any people watching on home who want this light right now, want this joy right now, want the perfect leadership of Jesus Christ over their lives. You can have it right now. You don't need to be a good boy, a good girl for Jesus, like Santa. All you need to do is admit that you are not and say sorry to God for where you've gone it alone and ask for his forgiveness and Jesus loves to give it. The forgiveness of sins, the gift of his spirit, all you have to do is ask him. You have it right now, and you can be absolutely sure that you will not be alone this Christmas. In fact, you will never be alone ever again. And so there are 11 days left of 2020. Who knows what it holds? It's five days until Christmas, and the greatest news you could ever hear. Well, look, thanks very much for listening. I'm going to close us now with a short prayer. Father God, we thank you that Jesus is a leader like no other. Thank you that he will one day bring in a future like no other. Wherever we're coming from today, please would you help us to consider the person of Jesus Christ this Christmas and what it means to follow him today. And we ask it for his name's sake. Amen.